In this video, we're going to talk about the solubility of organic compounds. So let's start with this example. Which compound is more soluble in water? Ethanol or dimethyl ether? What would you say? So we're comparing two different functional groups. Is an alcohol more soluble in water? Or would you say an ether is more soluble in water? The correct answer is the alcohol. Alcohols have a higher solubility in water than ethers. Looking at these two molecules, they have the same chemical formula, C2H6O, but different functional groups. Now let's talk about why alcohols have a higher solubility in water than ethers. The answer has to do with hydrogen bonding. If we look at the ether, I'm just going to redraw it. Notice what type of hydrogen bonds we can form with an ether. Let's say if we mix it with water. So here's water. And we could form a hydrogen bond here. Hydrogen has a partial positive charge. And it's attracted to the partially negatively charged oxygen atom. So there are some intermolecular bonds that can form between the water and the ether. So the ether does have some solubility in water, but the alcohol can dissolve in water better than the ether can. And let's see why. So here is the OH group of ethanol. Notice that the oxygen in ethanol can form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen atom in water, but also the hydrogen atom in ethanol can also form another hydrogen bond with water. So the ether can only act as a hydrogen bond acceptor. The oxygen atom accepts a bond with hydrogen in water. Ethanol can act as an H bond acceptor because it has the oxygen, the same as the ether has it. But because it has a hydrogen attached to the oxygen, it can also act as a hydrogen bond donor. So it can do both. And as a result, it has a higher solubility in water. Number two, which compound has a higher solubility in water? Would you say it's 1-butanol on the left or one octanol on the right. What would you say? What answer would you pick? Now, for those of you who want more videos on organic chemistry, check out the links in the description section below this video. I'm going to post a video that shows you all of my full length extended version videos on my Patreon membership. And you can also find many of them on my YouTube membership as well. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. I may also be adding some practice exams. So that's going to be included in that video that is in the description section below for those of you who might be interested in that. By the way, another thing I want to ask, what type of videos within organic chemistry would you like me to create? Are there any topics within organic chemistry that maybe I can make a video on. If you have any ideas, feel free to post it in the comment section below. Now, going back to this one, how can we determine which compound has a higher solubility in water? We need to realize that water is a polar molecule and like dissolves like. The polar part of 1-butanol is the alcohol. That's the polar region of this molecule. One octanol have the same polar region. 
Now the carbon hydrogen bond, this part is nonpolar. So here we have four carbons that make up the nonpolar tail of this molecule. But for the other one, we have a total of eight carbons or eight carbon atoms that makes up the nonpolar tail. So because this molecule here it has such a big nonpolar tail, it's going to be less soluble in water. This one, the nonpolar tail is smaller, so it's going to have a higher solubility in water. So we could say that it's more soluble. Therefore, 1-butanol is the answer that we're looking for. It has a higher solubility in water. So when dealing with organic compounds, if you have a polar head and a nonpolar tail, as the number of carbon atoms decreases, particularly the carbon atoms that only have hydrogen atoms attached to it, like the CH3s, the CH2s, the CHs, those type of carbon atoms. As those number of atoms decreases, the solubility in water increases. So another good example would be butanoic acid versus hexanoic acid. They have the same functional group, that is a carboxylic acid, but butanoic acid has less carbon atoms. So therefore, it's going to have a higher solubility in water than octanoic acid. I think I said hexanoic, but this is, let me clarify that, that's octanoic acid. It has eight carbons. So, if the functional group is the same, the organic compound with less carbon atoms typically has a higher solubility in water. Now, here's a question for you. Which one has a higher solubility in water? Would you say butanoic acid or 1-butanol? Which one would you, will you pick? Now, the carboxylic acid and the alcohol, they both have an OH group, so they could form hydrogen bonds with water. The carboxylic acid has a carbonyl group as well. So the carboxylic acid has two polar groups, the carbonyl and the hydroxyl group. So therefore, the carboxylic acid is going to be more soluble in water than in alcohol. So notice that the carboxylic acid can form more hydrogen bonds with water than the alcohol can. So here we have a hydrogen bond acceptor with the oxygen in the alcohol. And here we have a hydrogen bond donor that comes from the hydrogen in the alcohol. Now with a carboxylic acid, we could do the same thing because of, you know, we have the same OH group. The oxygen can accept, it could be an H bond acceptor and the hydrogen can be an H bond donor. But we can have the same effect with the carbonyl oxygen. It can be an H bond acceptor as well. So the reason why a carboxylic acid has a higher solubility in water than an alcohol, given the same number of carbon atoms. We both have four carbon atoms. It's simply because the carboxylic acid, it can form more hydrogen bonds because of the additional carbonyl group. And so it's going to have a higher solubility in water as a result of that. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into the solubility of organic compounds. Now for those of you who want videos on acids and bases, resonance structures, Newman projections, chair conformations, IUPAC nomenclature, 
stereochemistry, SN1, SN2 reactions, even my organic chemistry one final exam video, check out the links in the description section below this video and you can get access to more content, including the full length version of those videos. So for instance, my free video on acids and bases might be like 20 to 30 minutes long on YouTube. The full version, which is, if I remember correctly, somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half long, you can find that on my Patreon membership program or my YouTube membership program as well.